While no shortage of studios and directors have achieved recognition in the anime fan community, it's incredibly rare for writers to achieve the same, and not without good reason. When looking through the average anime writer's portfolio, they often seem to have been involved with every kind of show, with little consistency in their style or in the quality of what they've written. Because so much anime is adapted from manga and light novels, it can also be difficult to get a sense of what the anime writer is responsible for in comparison with the writer of the source material. The first anime staffer to really have achieved mainstream recognition purely as a writer is Urobuchi Gen, who rose in popularity for his prominent style of dark, depressing original stories with the likes of Madoka Magica, Fate Zero, and Psychopaths. However, the Urobuchi is not the only anime writer with a distinctive style, nor the only one pumping out plenty of anime original stories. Today, we'll be talking about a writer who brings a similar edge both to her adaptations and to her original work, and who's proven herself to be the queen of anime melodrama, Mari Okami. Okada. Considering the size of her portfolio, there's a good chance you're familiar with at least one thing she's worked on if you're big into anime. Toradora, Anohana, Black Butler, and Vampire Knight have all enjoyed fairly mainstream success, and in the past few years, Zetsuen no Tempest, Nagi no Asukara, The Pet Girl of Sakuraso, and Selector Infected We Cross have all been fairly popular. At a glance, these shows may not seem like they have much in common in terms of genre, but when you look at the way that the shows are written from the overall structure, to the interactions of the characters, then you'll quickly pick up on some commonalities. Okada's shows almost always feature some kind of love triangle, rectangle, pentagon, dodecahedron, etc., and her characters are often very much defined by their obsessive love for someone else. The melodrama which arises within a group of friends when all of them start falling in love with one another is by far the most common theme in her work, whether it's in the form of a high-stakes mystery thriller, a quiet series about middle schoolers dealing with transgender issues, issues, or a modern fantasy about the racial tension between fish people and land dwellers. Oftentimes, the major twists in her shows are incited by someone acting out of frustration for their unrequited love, often with tragic consequences. To that end, Okada is not afraid to bring heightened stakes to her drama. One of the most unique things about her work is that even when she's doing adaptations, most of her shows tend to have definitive endings, and are not designed to be left open for a second season or for the continuation of the manga the way that most anime tend to be. Even in cases wherein the manga does continue from where the show left off, she often tries to keep the story fairly self-contained, and to not just leave it unsatisfyingly open-ended. Because most of her shows are not designed to go on forever, she often has the opportunity to let characters die, or even more amazingly, to actually allow relationships to take off before the end of the series. If you want to see love triangles which actually end in two people together, then her shows are probably for you. My personal biggest criticism of Okada's writing is that her characters tend to feel very strongly about things which I am not given time to care about much as a viewer. Most of her characters fall very deeply in love very quickly, often without much of a reason, and I sometimes can't bring myself to care which relationships will actually pan out in the end. Because her characters tend to be so single-minded and obsessive, their dialogue can also get very repetitive. These problems appear most strongly in her original work, whereas the characters in her adaptations tend to come packaged with a little bit more depth and intrigue to round them out. A common common criticism of Okada's work is that she sometimes takes the melodrama too far, with characters often yelling, crying, and gesturing wildly at key dramatic moments, but I think that she uses this overwrought style on purpose, possibly in the name of feeling like stage drama. While some of them are adaptations, Okada has managed to work on multiple shows which make heavy references to Shakespeare, and even wrote on the semi-musical drama Red Garden and the other kind of stage drama Akiba 48. I think the overwrought dialogue and emotions of her shows are a deliberate stylistic choice, if anything, and while your mileage and mine will vary on how well this works from show to show, I think it's pretty cool that she goes through with this style on so many series. Okada is also a huge proponent of the good old-fashioned plot twist, and will dole them out regularly throughout each of her shows. Several of her works are structured around a huge plot twist occurring right in the middle of the show, followed by a time skip, and then slowing down the pace to re-establish all of the characters' relationships. It's worth noting at this point that while Okada has been responsible for writing some really excellent series, such as Wandering Sun, Red Garden, and Hanasaku Iroha, she has also been responsible for some of anime's most infamous train wrecks, such as Fractale and the Black Rock Shooter TV series. A lot of her shows ride the line between being amazing and horrible by way of turning into a total clusterfuck by the end, such as Kanan, Aquarian Evol, and Akiba 0048, though the latter of those two are also Shoji Kawamori vehicles, which are known for being pretty un 
unhinged already. Many of Okada's shows are highly divisive, whether in terms of their overall quality with shows like M3, Gosik, and Kodomo no Jikan, or in terms of the events that happen in the story with shows like True Tears and Kuroshitsuji 2. Suffice it to say that whether you find yourself enjoying one of her shows or not, you're likely going to see something a bit different from the norm and to walk away with a strong opinion about it. Most fascinating to me about Okada's style is that it's totally not my thing. Plot-focused dramas full of twists and turns and any kind of teen melodrama are about as far away from my strike zone as I can possibly imagine. A lot of the times, her shows certainly don't do much for me. However, at her best, she has managed to write the few shows in those genres which I actually am a fan of. I certainly favor Okada's adaptation work over her original stories, but I also value her ability to bring her dramatically energetic and flavorful style to series like Toradora and Horo Musuko, which could have been handled very differently by another writer. I wouldn't attribute my favoritism of every show that I like from her entirely to her writing, as I think that Red Garden owed a lot to director Komatsuo, and that both Kanan and Zetsuen no Tempest were very much enhanced by the phenomenal action direction of Ando Masahiro, but I nonetheless think that she helped to carry those shows and to make them interesting. There are still a number of shows that she's written which I haven't had the chance to see yet but have heard good things about, such as Pet Girl of Sakura so, and I'm pretty excited to get around to watching them. If you've seen any of Okada's shows, then let me know what you thought of them or about her style in general in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to let me know by subscribing or by supporting my channel via Patreon or PayPal. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.